Welcome, time for some art fun. Today, we're going to a cafe, so stick around. On my recent video about my grail pens, some seen here, um, I got a comment asking about my traveler's notebooks and how I use my pens. And so I wanted to share a little bit of that. And I was at a cafe with my husband and he brought some books to read and I brought my pens and my traveler's notebook to draw in. This is the camel passport size. And I used my fine nib mother of pearl Leonardo to do a sketch of my puppy. And I just really love this clip. It is so cool. It's a Traveler's Notebook brand, which is a Japanese brand, and it is a very popular brand of basically refillable journals. So I usually fill up journals the way I fill up sketchbooks. But these journals, you buy one cover, and the theory is you use that for the rest of your life, and it accumulates you know, very unique scratches and patterns and markings, and you take care of it and you just refill the inserts. And that obviously takes up a lot less space. Um, but it's also just really cool that you can flip through so many more past journal entries without having to take out like a pile of hardcover notebooks. So one of the things that you can do with a traveler's notebook is you can have a watercolor paper insert. And that's what this is. So I was doing my sketch on my watercolor insert. And I have one for my passport size, which is this little handheld size. It literally is the size of a passport. <laughs> it is so cute. So in this one, I have one insert with the watercolor paper and one insert with the lightweight paper, which is really fountain pen friendly. And it's also just double the pages. So I really like journaling on the lightweight paper and drawing and painting on the watercolor paper. And then I also have an insert with um, a, like a little zippy pouch where I put stickers and washi tape and things like that so I can decorate my pages in my journal. Traveler's notebooks are also really fun because they're so highly personalizable, personalizable, personalized. <laughs> so like the clip that you see there, that's one of a couple of different options of clips. You also put, there's like a string that you tie it with. There's like an elastic band that you use to tie your traveler's notebook closed and there are charms that you can put on that band which i do like to do i ordered a couple of keychains from etsy and they are in the shape of really cute animals one is a sloth and one is an adorable little very worried looking guinea pig and i put the guinea pig on this passport camel notebook and i put the sloth on my larger regular size it's called the regular sized traveler's notebook um, which I got in olive, which is my favorite color. Olive and camel are two of my favorite colors. So those are the two colors that I got. Navy is uh, further down the line. I do love navy and appreciate it and think it's beautiful. It's just not something that, for instance, I wear that often or pick things in that color that often, but I loved it for a traveler's notebook. So I actually got an imitation traveler's notebook from Etsy, from a uh, small Etsy seller, and they do their own imprinting on it, engraving or embossing, I guess, or debossing. And you can tell them whatever you want, send them any picture. And so I did get one in um, a blue and I really like that too. So I'll try to remember to leave a link for that down below because that was a really good deal. I'm just showing you some of my favorite pens and inks that I've been using lately uh, while I talk about how I've been using my pens to sketch. So one thing that I do, some people sometimes have asked me, hey, I see that you use broad nibs. Um, fountain pens come in a range of nib sizes, just like your fine liners. You know, if you get microns and they come in 0 0.5, 0 0.0005, 1, which is like a giant thick marker. Well, the same for fountain pens. You can get a fountain pen in a broad nib, which is really fat, or in a fine nib or an extra fine nib or even an extra, ex ultra extra fine nib for super duper fine lines. But I love broad nibs for writing. I love to see a ton of ink go down on the page. That's one of the reasons I love writing with fountain pens is for the really fun, colorful, shimmering, shading fountain pen inks that you can get. But for drawing, a lot of people didn't understand, well, how do you use a broad nib for drawing? Because it's much harder to control. It would be like doing all of your drawings with the one size, like the marker sized micron. And writing with the fountain pen in reverse, it's called reverse writing. And that's what you're seeing me do here with this little sketch of Tuffy. Again, it's a totally different sketch in a different <laughs> notebook, but it's still a sketch of Tuffy. And as you can see, the feed, that black feed on the nib, 
is what's showing instead of the silver nib showing. And when you're writing, usually you want the silver part, the nib part to be facing you and the feed to be facing the paper. But with reverse writing, the feed is facing up and you're writing with the upper part, like you're writing with the top of the nib. And that is a very thin line. And that's why sometimes you can just get a broad nib and you can get a fine line by flipping it over or a fat line by using it the right way. So reverse writing like this is how, and there's my regular fat line. Um, that's how I can get line variation with a straightforward, broad, medium, fine, extra broad, double broad, uh, zoom. Like you can get a lot of line variation with fountain pens. And it's one of the reasons I really, really love them. I love writing with them and I love drawing with them. Now, part of drawing with them, I actually had a whole sketchbook that I filled with fountain pen drawings and it was just without any sketching, without any pencil sketch underneath. So just basically going in with a bold, dark, indelible <laughs> line and just going for it. Now you can soften things up because fountain pen ink generally is water soluble. It's a water-based ink. Um, you can get pigment ink that is uh, indelible and that you you know will resist water, but normally you should assume your fountain pen ink, unless it says it's waterproof, is not waterproof. And what I love about that is you can take a water brush and blend the lines out, lighten colors up, move them around like watercolor. But the only difference is it's not really easy to lift. So it's much more staining. If you would think of having like the most staining watercolor, that's very similar to drawing or painting with fountain pen ink because it will flow and it will move around with water the same way watercolor does. But it is really, really hard to lift all of the color off the page once it's down. And I really liked sketching like that because it took, it's, it might sound stressful, like, oh my gosh, what if I make a mistake? I won't be able to fix it. But what I tried to think instead was, uh, you're going to make a mistake. <laughs> it's a hundred percent guarantee. There's no question. You don't have to stress about it. It's happening. You're going to make a mistake. And those mistakes when I'm sketching are some of the more interesting parts of the sketch. Like it's how you know it's art and not a picture. Um, like hand done art and not a photo that you take on your phone just for fun with your friends. So by the way, there's the elastic I was talking about. There's the little guinea pig. And this is somewhere else. I'm at a different, I think this is at the hotel. And I'm just giving you a little walkthrough of my, how I have this set up. I've got that craft paper folder. Here's my little zippy pouch. That is actually my wallet from an Etsy maker. And I use this as my wallet. And there's my watercolor sketchbook. Um, so I do decorate with stickers. That's the sketch I did a lot earlier that I showed you. Here's just some of my fun inks that I'm using right now. That London Penco Cool Tone Primary Manipulation with a broad nib, this pen right here, I've been completely obsessed with. This had come a while ago and I wasn't sure about it because the cap isn't flush with the body and I actually really have a preference for that. The cap has a little step up from the body, but it is so beautiful. It's so interesting to look at and the nib writes so well. I just became obsessed with this pen. Here is the regular size traveler's notebook that I was talking about. And I'm just going to give you a walkthrough of this one. So that is actually a little sheet that came with a Galen leather pen case that I bought, which I thought was really cool. I've got some coffee stickers. I bought a set of coffee stickers and a set of book stickers from an Etsy seller. And they were really, really cool. So I put a bunch of those stickers everywhere. Like that's a good example. So cute. So that is my lightweight. Pa Actually, that's not lightweight paper. That one is some Tomoe River paper for sketching. That's my drawing of my dog Tuffy that I got from my Redbubble shop. I've got a pencil board, another of these zippy pouches for my stickers. Um, and I really like having that handy. I had a field notes book that I filled up, but I loved the cover so much that I put it on top of this. This one, this is just the paper that it came with, which I actually really liked the insert that it came with. And then this is the other side of that zippy pouch. It has a place for cards. So anyway, I hope that you enjoyed kind of coming along with me as I used my traveler's notebooks. I did use them for journaling and for drawing on that trip. I'm giving you just some pictures of some pretty inks and pens while I'm giving you my outro. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, hit subscribe if you're not subscribed. It really helps. And leave me a comment with whether or not you journal. Do you use traveler's notebooks? Does this make you interested in traveler's notebooks? I'd love to hear how you journal down below. And until next time, remember create something cute.